Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Welcome back to the final lecture for chapter 11 and in fact for all of this course. And I'm going to talk about the exercises at the end of chapter 11. Okay, these exercises are going a little more deeply into what we derived for central force motion. And there's really a lot, lot more that can be done with this, but this gives you a, an introduction. So problem one is show that in Cartesian coordinates, the magnitude of the aerial velocity is one half x y dot minus y x dot. Okay, we derived it in polar coordinates. All you need to do is transform back from polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. Now, this is a curious problem. <clears throat> We've derived several equations like this, but the thing that you should notice is the variable that you differentiate with respect to is not time. There's no r double dot, but it's theta. And so you want to change the independent variable theta, sorry, t, time, into theta. And this is just an exercise in... Uh, in uh, implicit differentiation and chain rule. And you can follow a little bit the model that was used in deriving this equation where we used r equal one over u. That was changing the dependent variable r, and now you're gonna change the independent variable t to theta. So there's some hints in that problem. Okay, this is interesting, three. So you have two expressions for time here that I want you to derive. And these you're going to derive from using the constants of motion. In fact, so you have angular momentum and you have energy. Okay, and you can isolate time by itself and you've seen plenty of examples where that is done when you have energy or a constant of motion and this is what I'm asking you to do in this problem. Okay problem four I'm asking you to take a specific form for the central force and derive the potential energy and then to compute something about work. And then five, here we come back to this again. And five is, I've already done it actually in, in the lecture, so you need to go back and, and uh, look at where that was and how it works. And then also, I've said words about this, but remember angular momentum is r cross p, p is mv, and see how this expression relates to it. Okay, and remember, there is a solution manual for all the problems, and the location on Figshare is given at the beginning of all of these videos. So I hope you've enjoyed this. This is really the first introduction to mechanics, and you've get You've been exposed to a lot of ideas, which you can go further in, um, learning about Lagrangian and Hamiltonian mechanics. Energy plays a big, is, at the, is fundamental to both of those approaches. And more about the ordinary differential equations aspect of mechanics. You can look at my ordinary differential equations playlist. And then when you're really feeling adventurous, and you want to learn a different type of mechanics, go to my quantum mechanics playlist. Okay, that's all for now, and I will see you on 
the next playlist that I develop. Goodbye.